We are joined now by Kansas football coach Lance Leipold in a construction going on all around. The Jayhawks are actually out of their home for this season. You got games at Arrowhead Stadium. You got games where the MLS team plays in, in Kansas City, but they are building this massive new stadium entertainment complex where David Booth Memorial Stadium stood. Lance, I got to think that's not happening unless you guys are winning some games here. Well, first of all, Andy, great to be with you, and, and thanks for saying that. Uh, you know, it's definitely exciting times for us right now, and uh, kind of like we had just said a minute ago was uh, it not, you know, I think definitely the success of the last couple seasons has is, is definitely helped this momentum. And and from the time we named the, uh, announced the project to the time that we actually started moving on stuff, to me, is by far the fastest I've ever been a part of. And it's really, truly exciting to see see what's going to happen. Now, in the meantime, yeah, there's going to be some inconveniences, um, and especially with home games next year. We did experience a little bit of that last year when we renovated our locker room and weight room to kind of jumpstart this project. And it's really helped our players kind of adapt to what some of these things can be. And I'm really proud of what they've been able to do here the, these uh, three months or so of the second semester. The most interesting part of the, the contract is, so you have this deal to play your Big 12 games where the Chiefs play. Mm -hmm. It's in the contract that if you host a playoff game, it's gonna be at Arrowhead. And I realize as a coach, you don't want to think about that at all. But I, I got to say, Travis Goff, your AD, I, I appreciate that he's looking at that and going, you know what? I feel like these guys are, are in a position to think about these things. Yeah, it you know, when that came out, I put it this way, I was not privy to any of that being even part of the language. It was never in a discussion of, you know, even behind the closed doors, hey, what happens if, you know, if everything lined up correctly and, and that on the field. So it's exciting, you know, and, and again, these, you know, especially places with natural grass that share stadiums. I know Lincoln Financial in Philadelphia and that when, when you ask somebody to, to be able to use their field and, and, and do those things uh, on a Saturday and there could be a Sunday home game, um, it, it takes special cooperation, and and that's gonna. You know, I can we can't thank the Chiefs enough. Uh, Children's Mercy Park, as you mentioned, in Kansas City, Kansas, um, where Sporting KC plays. Uh, you know, for our first two games, our two non-conference games should be an exciting, more intimate. Uh, uh, you know, uh, pl stadium to play in, and it still should be exciting, and uh, we'll make the best of it. Yeah, that, that UNLV game, by the way, everybody, don't, don't, don't sleep on that one. Those guys are, are very good. Barry Odom's got a good team. So that that could be a very cool, cool game in a very intimate setting. But you know, when you look at this, you're essentially starting in a new league now with all that the Big 12 was brought in last year and this year. How, how different does it feel when you look at your schedule and you see conference games against Arizona State and Colorado to go along with Houston and, and teams that, that weren't there two years ago. Yeah, when you really look at it again, the the oddness, I guess, or uniqueness of taking this job over in May of of twenty one, and then we add, you know, then we add some teams, then we now we're adding more teams. This job continually changes, as and and we don't even have to relocate. So it, it'll be exciting. It's different. I, I guess even from my my small college days of, I've always enjoyed just you know, competing against different people, different venues, I think gives you different experiences. Um, I, I just think it, it's going to continue to get better and better. And and I think, I don't know if the word parity is, but matchups are going to be, you know, there's always talk of the two teams that just departed about their resources versus everybody else. And I think it's a little bit more on level ground and it, it's made it exciting. And I, I think it'll continue to be that way. I will point out that you did beat those teams a couple times on their way out. So that we don't have to worry that much about it, but, but you're right. I I'm, I'm very excited about the big 12 schedules this year. I, I imagine as a coach, it is not as much fun when you look at it and you see that these are all games you can lose. These are, these are every team you play is going to be a team that can beat you. Absolutely. I, I think that's part of what people, you know, 
yeah, I'm really proud of what our staff and our players have done here in the last two years, Andy. But uh, I think we can get way too far ahead of ourselves. We just start looking at how games could really play out because of the, again, the way people can can put things together. You can look at Baylor a couple of years ago. They're picked ninth and win the in the league, and they win the conference. You look at what TCU did in Sonny's first year. There's going to continually be those type of teams that, and and I'm I'm sure we're mentioned in those type of conversations of teams that maybe surprise people so you have to be ready you have to stay grounded and and be able to go and and as you say you know you mentioned Arizona State but you know two weeks earlier we go all the way out to Morgantown then you go the other direction and I I just think uh you know that's that's today's uh new college football at this level and and I think those are going to be things that we're going to have to learn and tweak and look at no matter how many it may be four years before you do it again but you got to keep in mind Okay, what's it like on the body? What time are the kickoffs? What are those going to be? And and we've got to be smart on how we practice, how we travel, and and do all those things because that could pay dividends uh, for you late in the season. The NCAA tournament continues without Kentucky. Great Sweet 16 coming up. How do you watch that Sweet 16? Well, with Prime Video. Watch every game live on your phone, on your laptop. You can relax, watch at home, on your TV. All of it with Prime Video with a subscription. One password because what you do is you subscribe to Prime Video. Then you use the add-ons for Max and Paramount Plus, which would give you all of the tournament games within your Prime Video app. One app, not switching back and forth. One password it would be so easy. And oh, by the way, yeah, new Roadhouse course jake gyllenhaal as the new dalton they move it from i believe the first one was in kansas the originals in kansas this was in the keys i can't wait i haven't had time because i've been watching the tournament but one of these days i'm gonna get to watch that one too because i of course am a prime video subscriber you can be too click the link in the show description if you're watching on youtube or if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform the link will be in the show description. Just give it a click, and they will show you the rest of the way. So you you mentioned your your small college experience, and and for those who don't know, and I, if you haven't read up on on Lance Leipold, six national titles at Wisconsin Whitewater in in Division three. You look at Kalen DeBoer, who won an NAIA national title, takes Washington to the national title game last year. Now he's the Alabama coach. Uh, Chris Kleiman, obviously great career at North Dakota State. He's won the Big 12 at Kansas State. When when these jobs open up, do you, do you want to call the ADs and say, hey, guys, <laughs> you notice a trend here? Yeah, yeah you, you know, there's others that, that as well. You know, well, well, Brian Kelly, you know, he started yeah. at Grand Valley Grand State. State. You know, and yeah. Chuck Martin did some of that. There's guys there. and But I think, you, you know, it – it gets talked about more, especially because of Kalen's success and which is so great and, and so happy for him is uh, I just think though, when you, when people hire people with that, they know or backgrounds that they're comfortable with. And I, I think sometimes, you know, um, it can be used. It's looked at a, at a risk. I think a lot of times, you know, right, wrong or indifferent, Division three can be looked at as being closer to high school football than it is to power five football, power four football. And sometimes, you know, you can go all the way back to Jerry Faust experience, uh, experiment if, if people are, are sometimes not going to take that chance. So sometimes you do. And, and I'm said, I'll be forever grateful for, for Danny White. And because and Danny's, you know, is, is an outstanding, I think, administrator and for, and he's all, always going to be thinking outside the box. And he did, and he gave me a great opportunity at Buffalo. Well, and that's, I, I t I've talked to Danny about that whole situation. Danny's the, the AD at Tennessee. Now he was the AD at Buffalo uh, when you got hired and he, he explained exactly what his thinking was, is I can get a big 10 position coach who may not understand the CEO parts of this job, or I can go find a very successful CEO and bring that person in. And that's, that's yeah. how he wound up in your living room. Yeah. It's, and, and, and fortunately for, for, for me and our family and, and our staffs that it worked out that way. And, and I think that's one thing, and it depends on what you're looking for. It, it really does. I, you know, I, I've been, I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, our, 
Andy Kolnicki was our offensive coordinator, just moved down to Penn State, but he's with us 11 years. You know, Brian Borland's been, we're going on 18 years as being the defensive coordinator. There's guys in this hallway. I've worked longer than probably twice as long as most marriages even last, you know, so <laughs> there, and we spend a lot more time together sometimes, unfortunately, than we do our own spouses. So, you know, having continuity, having respect, uh, being on the same page, egos in check, and still finding ways to be successful is a balancing act. And, and, and uh, you know, we've been grateful to do that at a few spots and we continue to, to want to plug away at doing it. So you mentioned Andy, your offensive coordinator heading to, to Penn state. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, you've had so much continuity with this staff since you've gotten there, but I do wonder, you know, it's obviously a great opportunity for him, but then you bring in Jeff Grimes, who's been at a bunch of places at, at Baylor at BYU at Auburn, you know, you, you name it. He's got a long career. Uh, Andy Reid was actually his position coach yep. at, at UTEP. Uh, but what's it like now with some some new ideas or, or kind of a fresh look at, at what you guys have been doing yeah. very well? Yeah, and I'll, I'll just kind of add in as well. We You know, DK McDonald is coming in as our, our corners coach from the Philadelphia Eagles, and he spent – I think it was up to eight years, six to eight years with uh, Matt Campbell at Toledo and Iowa State, and then now time in the league. To have two guys like that, I, I think, you know, Andy, it's really it, it's really a, a bonus for us because, you know, the first three years, you know, really emphasizing continuity and what we needed because this program hadn't had any in so long, from head coaches to position coaches to everything. But also now that we've gone into year four, it has forced me to make sure that we're, we're, we're hitting on the little things, our practice expectations, what we're doing, little details that sometimes can slip away from you when you think everybody's always on the same page if they've been in the building with you for, for multiple years. So, and like you also alluded to, I always enjoy when even our analyst role or other support staff roles, when other guys come in from other programs, asking them about, how it was done at other places. And, and I think that's the only way that you can learn and grow. And uh, though we've we've enjoyed the way we've done it and 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 the successes that we've been able to have from time to time, but at but at we, we're far from having all the answers and having this whole thing figured out. Well, and the other thing I think in you know, your offense is is still your offense, and even though Andy's not there, but I've all I, I I'm always interested by the way that. You play a fun brand of football, but you are very, you know, very much harping on fundamentals, on the little things, on that. You know, people look at you as, as this program builder, like get the little things right. But then you watch you guys play and you're playing two quarterbacks on the field at the same time. Yeah, I, I think those are some things that we made ourselves unique. We wanted to have player engagement. We wanted to have a little fun with it. Um, you know, there's things that are window dressing and there's things that, that can be used in those formations. And that's what we kind of like. And and we have just continued to evolve with in, in different ways. And and uh, and and when, you know, talking with Jeff Grimes about the position, that's I, I, I like some of the things that his Baylor offenses had done in the past. And I think they could be nice additions. But, you know, part of part of the, I guess, requirements of being being involved in this job was. We are going to continue to do the things that we do, and that's motion shifts, personnel groupings. And, and here's, you know, just a short example. I don't know if I've said this to you before in the past, but we played a non-conference game two years ago against – now two seasons ago against Houston. And mm -hmm. in that game, we were fortunate to win. Don't remember the the by how much, but it wasn't a lot. And we had 11 different players catch passes. And it really wow. resonated me that the more personnel groupings, the more people on the field, the more touches that people get, guess what? You build depth. Your morale's better. Things happen. Kids think they have a chance. And everything that we're doing, and it's not like, hey, let's make sure player 9, 10, and 11 get a quick touch here. It just happened to evolve through the thing. And, and, it, and it became part of our, our, our identity. We always wanted to be multiple enough that we could play to our strengths of the current season of whatever personnel grouping that was. That's been our, that that's really been our philosophy since Whitewater. I remember covering Urban Meyer early in his career, and he would talk about that, about how many different receivers would get touches during a game and, and what, and the goal was always double digits. You didn't try to force it, but he, he explained how one that mentally, 
keeps everybody engaged. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I may get my shot here, but also at practice all week mm -hmm. keeps everybody engaged. Exactly. And I think, you know, our offensive staff, you know, last year led by Andy and now, now by Jeff, I think that becomes very important on Monday and Tuesday. Because when you get a chance to see that you're in a couple personnel groupings on Monday and Tuesday, guess what? You're locked in. You're more focused. You're not waiting to see if something happens to fall your way on Wednesday or Thursday. You have no. And then all of a sudden, you know, your player engagement, like I said before, your morale's better. And guess what? Guys compete harder and you're building yeah. better depth. And, and, and also, even some of the guys that play a lot, you know, if, if Joe's doing a great job and in this small package he's been given, guess what? I, I better be on top of my game or he's going to get some more of my reps. Yep. No, it's, it, it is fun to watch. And it's amazing to me. I was going back just to get the exact date of your hire in 2021. It was April 30th. Like spring practice is done. How, how did you get this thing off the ground? You know, as quickly I, as you did, you know, we were done with our spring practice at Buffalo. Um, I got offered the job at like 745 Eastern time. And they said the plane was coming at 130 and uh, we're leaving at 130, I should say. And uh, I landed in Lawrence. They took us out to the field. The team had just finished their walkthrough for the spring game. And that was on a Friday. And uh met boosters and watched part of the spring game Saturday. And we went and the semester was ending. So that was the next component. The guys were going home for two, three weeks. And then the portal was, was being created. So I'm trying to meet guys and try to make sure that they know that there's going to be a, you know, new opportunity and new vision. And, and uh, you know, we're fortunate, but also, and I think you've probably covered this along the way. Um, you know, this program struggled being under scholarship, got itself upside yeah. down in, in with, with the 25 hard count and, and the, you know, the portal, when they got rid of the hard count, we were able to, to, you know, take advantage of that and bring in players. Our portal recruiting has been very solid. I don't know if every guy, in fact, we probably have less guys in the portal that start than have, but what they've done is added that layer in the two deep that and and the constant competition in the program that we desperately needed, and and that's really helped us. And again, I, I think our players once they saw how we we're going about it, we moved to morning practices. We did some things. We said and we said what we said we we're going to do with them, and and just in the day to day operations, we did. And I think that started to build the trust, and we started to build confidence and. Uh, We've been able, a few players came over from Buffalo that were great leaders and also showed, uh, you know, led through example, but also showed uh, belief in what the, what we do and how it works. And I really think it helped us kind of close the gap sooner than later. Well, and you mentioned the transfer portal. The other thing, and I've heard you talk about this in press conferences, is talk about retention and how important that is. Obviously, you're bringing back Jalen Daniels at quarterback. He's he's coming off an injury, but but you're hoping to have him ready for the season, your, your corners, Kobe Bryant and Melo Dotson, those are NFL guys. How, how critical is it? Cause if you look at what you've lost in the portal, teams aren't cherry picking off you guys, even though you've got good players. Yeah. Um, you know, we lost three players to the sec in my first week on the job. And, uh, and since then we've been able to hold, we lost one this year, but all in all, we've held in there pretty well. I think, you know, this was a player probably prior to the portal, um, was probably had as many, uh, as much attrition as anyone in the off season. I think of mm. that off season. And I think these last two knock on wood, cause we have that other window coming. Yeah. And we've been in the lower part, at least of the big 12. And I, I think hopefully that says about our players, our staff, the relationships, the trust, all the things you talk about. But I think like a lot of coaches though, Andy, when, when you get a text or a call that says, Hey, can I, you got a minute or I talk your, your heart skips a beat. Cause you know, um, it's, you're, you're always wondering what else is happening. And, uh, but I, I do hope that, you know, our players see that the consistency in what they have, we've tried to say that let's not make everything about transactional relationships and, and, and we're trying to do things. And, uh, so far we've been able to, they, they've been able to really resonate with that. Well, when you guys announced your contract a few weeks ago, you had a really interesting answer to a question. And then you mentioned that same thing, that, that everything's not transactional. And you said, if it was all about money, I'd be somewhere else. And you mentioned that you've, you've told your players that too. What are those conversations like 
with the players? And and how do they respond to that? Because it's it's I can't imagine as a as a 19, 20, 21 year old having those conversations yeah. in a way that with dollar figures that are similar to what I deal with as a 40 something. Right. Um you know, some of that's even done at the position coach level, on the service level to do some. I'm, I I don't get deep, deep into the weeds. But like you said, you, you try to talk about it because, and I, I think I've said it before in an interview like this, so I guess I'll end up getting quoted again, is, <laughs> is if somebody is reaching out to you and you're not in the portal, what type of actions are happening if you decide to go there that you're not aware of that could affect you? Are there other right. conversations happening? And we just talk, hey, you know, we know we've got work to do. We're getting better. We're doing the best we can in, in NIL facilities on the field. All we're trying to do is get a little better. But you know what? We're pretty honest about it. If somebody's reaching out and you're not there, what what value system is that? And 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 what are you lining yourself with? And because once you're there, you don't know. And um, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not, it's, I don't have one particular one or anything, but I, I just kind of put that out to a couple of players and, and they know, and, and they kind of pause because like we ask them if they've been treated fairly and, and, and whatnot here. Do you like it here? We get back to those things and, and hopefully, but like I said, we, we have lost a couple and, and we're not, and you're not always going to keep everybody happy or, or that's always going to resonate to, to every individual. Well, and, and that's, the this thing I, I'm curious about with every coach because you know I always thought if you can create a program where people want to play you you might not have to have as much money to keep them because they're happy but mm -hmm. that's that might be a little pie in the sky how do you how do you balance having a program that players enjoy that they like playing in but also that holds them accountable that has discipline how do you how do you have both of those things? Well, it's a it's an evolving process of how we're transitioning ourselves because you know right now we're still dealing with a good portion of a roster that was not recruited with NIL at, at the forefront. You know, I, I I was telling a group I had to speak to a group the other day, and I can remember when cost of attendance came in, and you probably do as well, Andy. Where all of a sudden mm -hmm. the question got to be, what's my check? What's my monthly st extra stipend? And and that's kind of we, now it's that on steroids, you know and and when it becomes that, that, that becomes an interesting thing because there are other factors in families and families and, and things that young men are going to have to look at. But we, we try to keep it, uh, uh, you know, about the daily things of improvement and hopefully the goals of playing at the next level are still at the forefront that will help them and we give them the tools and resources to get there. I mean, right now, we're going to have a, a, this will be the largest senior class I've ever been a part of. We'll have over 30 seniors. And yeah, and that's a little COVID. It's a little portal. It's a little red shirting and, and retention. And all of a sudden, boom, you have this guy. But you know what? It's a really good group of guys. And uh, for their sake, and I, I, I think the other thing, Andy, probably I, I should have hit on earlier. I think it has to do with the relationships with themselves. They're within mm -hmm. the lock. Amongst they, each other, yeah. Yeah, with each other that, you know what, you know, Jalen Daniels is a heck of a young man. So is Devin Neal. Mello, Kobe is funny and as competitive as anyone. And these are guys, they like being around each other. And, and, and as we say, you know, sometimes in the, in, in portal recruiting, and especially if there's dollar figures, you're not bringing guys in to sit, you know, sometimes yeah. when, you, when you replace the guy, Okay, you might come in and they're going to recruit over you through the portal, but who's who's that guy's buddy, you know? And how does that affect the rest of the locker room? And there's other dynamics, and we think about that sometimes as well. Well, I, so I was thinking about one player that is, is not on your team anymore, but I'm curious, what did Jason Bean <laughs> mean to your team? This was the, the, he was the quarterback who he. he was a starter. He filled in for Jalen at times. Like the, he had so many different roles, but it seemed like there were multiple opportunities for him to leave and go somewhere else and be a starter. But he stuck it out with you guys. Yeah, personally, I, I'll, I'll always be grateful to Jason being in so many ways because I think he's almost, you know, 
he, for what he really did to me for college football, because he was a backup quarterback and knew he was going to be a backup. And actually, you know, his last play of the year before in the triple overtime game, you know, we kind of called a Philly special play or whatever. And he ends up, you know, he could have maybe tucked it and run it. He throws it, it's incomplete. We lose the game. Of course, everybody wants to pick that play or whatever. And, and that he, he already told us he was leaving. He told us he's going to try his hand at the NFL. He's the fastest guy on the team. I go, what's going to happen? You run your 40. Well, they're going to ask me to play another position. I said, okay, well, then why don't we work at that other position? And, and he came back with the idea he was going to probably play as much or more receiver than he was going to play quarterback. And, you know, and then, and then Jalen gets hurt and, and can't go. Never once did he ever say, hey, wait a minute, guys, you told me I was going to get all this extra work to help me. And he really developed himself into a, into a fine quarterback. I thought the last two training camps we had, he was one of our most improved players. And to the point where scouts are, I, I sure hope he, he's going to get his opportunity to be in a camp. Maybe he'll be a, you know, a, kind of a dual guy or some a, a special thing that he can be on a practice squad or be a backup and do some things. But what he did for this program by sticking around where, where everyone else around the country seems to hit the eject button, um, really says a lot, and he did a lot for for Kansas Jayhawk football. Well, it, it sounds like that's the the kind of environment you're trying to foster and, and help you know find those guys. Mm -hmm. And and it seems like you've got a group of those guys now. So uh, Lance, you're in spring practice now. Cannot wait to see what you guys look like uh, on the on the soccer pitch and on <laughs> the uh, the Chiefs field. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you start working about, you know, you start thinking locker room sizes and press boxes. <laughs> and, yeah. well, thank goodness the uh, our guaranteed rate bowl was at a baseball stadium. So we, we've learned, uh, you know. You're all and, set. You know, yeah, you, you learn to adapt. And, heck, half the staff has made 13-hour bus trips. Heck, if we got to play in some other stadiums for a little outside of town, we'll be okay. <laughs> I cannot wait. Lance, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Andy. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.